As the project moves forward, its scope and the peculiarity of the novel start to sink in. Whilst further workshops continue, students start to define their roles in the project. Skip to um, the bit with the next Antinodarians and the crowd scene. Mm -hmm. With some of this early work remaining until the final show... It could not possibly have been suffered in civil society. And it falls to impose upon society with such false... Other ideas flourish, but ultimately fade away. Music plays an important part in the novel, and music is of course the reason that the students are in the department at all. So, whilst the majority continue acting, some students form the Shandy Orchestra and work on how the show will sound. Despite the relatively tight time restraints, the orchestra managed to tackle the music in a lot of detail. It just changes to something a little bit more sinister. It's what kind of... The orchestra will become smaller as players move to other areas of the production. Students will also lead the ensemble in later rehearsals and in the final show. Whilst the orchestra continue to add detail and thought to their performance, the other students get a chance at some music with the chorus that has been organised to sing two student works in the show. There is a lot of music being rehearsed in project sessions, but during these early stages, none of it is guaranteed to be in the final show. Luckily for the choir, the two choral pieces are given guaranteed and prominent positions fairly early on, allowing their rehearsals to have real focus. The final results of this confident work are magnificent. Just outside York lies the village of Coxwold, home to Shandy Hall. Now a museum to its most famous occupant, the house was once home to Lawrence Stern. By 
all that is good and virtuous, if there are three drops of oil to be got and a hammer to be found within ten miles of Shandy Hall, the parlour door hinge shall be mended this rain. But Shandy Hall also appears in Stern's novel. Coincidence? So he created Shandy Hall in his imagination as a fictional house in a fictional book. And then when he moved into what had been known as the Parsonage, his friends, it's recorded, referred him to the fact that he was probably living in the house that he was writing about. This was Shandy Hall. The property was owned by the Newbury Estate and it was visited in the late 60s by a stern enthusiast by the name of Kenneth Monkman. Monkman saw the possibility of paying tribute to Stern by, I suppose, not converting, but allowing the house to be open to the public. Because old houses attract a wide range of different people for a wide range of reasons. And the literary side is an important side, but it's not the only one. It contains the stamp of the period when Stern was here, but it also records the history of many other people who lived in it around and about right up to the present day. But because Stern was the one who wrote a book, and a book has never been out of print, and the book is celebrated internationally, then obviously the focus is tuned to his, the record of the time when he was here. Tristram Shandy is a celebrated work with its author's house as a testament to it. But what exactly is the novel about? It's about life and its unpredictability and the fact that although you might attempt to construct a clear forward path for um, the following day, the following hour, the next minute, that unfortunately chance has a way of uh, getting in the way and that the recording of a person's life is not something that can be done in a straightforward, linear fashion. Or rather, Stern saw no reason as to why one should be constrained by the rules that were being created for 18th century fiction, which suggested that there should be a beginning and a middle and an end. It was hugely popular. Stern had written, remember he's not written the whole book, he's written the first two volumes, and they are an instant success to the extent whereby he is painted by Joshua Reynolds as the vicar with his preaching scarf, but also resting his elbow upon the manuscript of the life and opinions of Tristram Shandy. It's the book that has made him famous. But how is this appropriate material for a practical project? If people are curious about anything, then Stern's work is there for the curious because it's, it's, it, encour it encourages the idea of the fact that you're going to be bringing 50% of your own imagination to a work. And if, you, if that's something that you have a tendency to do anyway, if you look at something and observe it and wonder and consider, then Stern's book is going to be food for that sort of mind. Theoretically, the first year intake to the University of York's music department are going to be interesting undergraduates who will be interested in their disciplines and also will, have, will be able to bring different aspects of their own life to this story where they're going to be encouraged to seek out the idea of how you can adapt, inform, entertain an audience and that's, that's a significant part of it is that the intention of, of this particular exercise is to put a finished piece of work in front of an audience. So it's not, it can't be self-indulgent, or if it is self-indulgent, it would jolly well better make sure that it also entertains, because otherwise it will not work. And it's not easy, but then what is? Um, it should be, I think, pretty challenging to all concerned. And what comes out of it, heaven only knows.